Hi, my name is Jenny Lauren Dowden for Conduit News, and today we have Joe Pearson joining us in the studio. He has joined the Republican primary race. He is running for a state Senate seat in District 25. Hi, Joe. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, listen, a lot of people may not know your story yet, so just tell us a little bit about you, your background, uh, life in Polk County. Okay. Um, so I have been lucky to be married to my high school sweetheart for 28 years, and we have four children, uh, ages 24 to 12, Wow! Uh, two boys and two girls. Uh, we are a foster and adoptive family, and that takes up a lot of our time and has been one of the most rewarding and most demanding things that we've done. And um, I've lived in uh, Russellville for about the last 15, 16 years, and I do a lot of community service from building wheelchair ramps or doing plumbing, uh, electrical for seniors or raising tens of thousands of dollars for children in our area uh, through Kiwanis. Wow. Well, what made you decide to join this uh, state Senate race? I just was tired of people talking about being conservative, but then when you start looking at the votes, they're just not there, uh, not willing to stand up to some of the big corporations mm -hmm. that run Arkansas politics uh, and have more influence than they should and not standing up to uh, the establishment. So District 25 is a new district. Yes. Tell us about that and the area that you could potentially be serving. So it's, it's all of Conway County, all of Pope County, and the city of Dardanelle and Yale County. Uh, unfortunately, Yale County got carved up and I, I know they're not happy about that. And especially with that Yale County being uh, a dual county seat, uh, for them to be cut out of the rest of the county, I, I know that they're very unhappy with that, but I want them to know that if I'm elected, I will represent them. They won't be uh, an afterthought. I, I, I definitely, I love Yale County uh, and I love Dardanelle and, and uh, I know a lot of people that own businesses over there and a lot of people, we're very interconnected. A lot of people that live in Dardanelle work in Russellville and vice versa. So we have a very symbiotic relationship. Talk to us about uh, your public service you running for this this seat is would not be your first time in public public service. You've right. been a JP there in uh, Pope County for the Quorum Court for several years now. Tell us about that time. I'm currently finishing off my third term as a JP. Uh, I never saw myself in politics, never saw myself holding a public office, but I attended a, a men's conference. And one of the speakers said, if if you men will not put your hand on the wheel, how can we complain about the direction our society is going? And that made a lot of sense to me. And so I felt really compelled to serve. And uh, so I started out as a JP and I've been very happy doing that. But um, I feel like, especially over the last three years, it has really prepared me uh, to serve in this capacity because we've faced some controversial issues. Uh, we, we faced the casino issue, which was huge, where 75 counties decided to put a casino in Pope County wow. without any regard to Pope County's vote. And so I was upfront on that. I was the one who passed a resolution immediately, kind of letting people know that that wasn't right and that Pope County didn't necessarily want that casino. And so I got that passed even before Amendment 100 uh, was put on the ballot. And I've continued to fight for my voters. And there's been a lot of pressure. There's been a lot of slander and negative mm -hmm. uh, campaigning by pro casino people. And, uh, but I knew what my voters voted and I stood by it. And in the last election, they showed me that that's where they still stand and they supported me and uh, voted out a lot of the JPs that voted to issue a letter. Wow, interesting. You've also, uh, you've done a lot of great work. Besides that, you passed a resolution with the Quorum Court uh, declaring Pope County a pro-life county. Yes. Talk to us about that. Very proud of that. Um, I'd wanted to do it as soon as that became a thing after the legislature passed their, their latest legislation uh, banning abortion in Arkansas. I wanted to come out in support of that, but I waited because of some of the contentious issues that were going on. Mm -hmm. I didn't want people to vote against it because of that. So I kind of waited till I thought the time was right. And I was super proud that that passed unanimously. Yeah, that's great. You also worked on an ordinance uh, allowing uh, people to be able to, uh, you know, move forward with their Second Amendment rights, yes. uh, have a concealed carry. Talk to us about that as well. I'm, I'm very pro Second Amendment. Um, I think it's a constitutional right that's not supposed to be infringed on <laughs> and frequently is. Right. And uh, this was one case where the legislature made it possible for us as a county to say we will allow our concealed carry permit holders to carry in the courthouse. And I wanted to take that step and give them back their, their rights. 
And there was sort of an unofficial, you can do it supposedly, but that wouldn't have stood up in court. We had to take that action. And so I wanted us to take that step to protect our employees that they would be protected by law uh, and allowed to carry. You know, you mentioned this earlier. You said that people would say that they are for certain issues, but then they, especially the past, you know, several years, they voted completely different. Um, we will hear from Republican, mm -hmm. conser you know, conservatives say, I'm pro-life, I'm for the Second Amendment, I'm fiscally conservative, yeah. but then we see them vote a completely different way. Talk to us about where you stand and why, well, how you would reassure, reassure voters that you would indeed stand for those principles. Well, again, I think my experience on the court kind of proves that when things are hard and there's a lot of money and a lot of uh, attacks being made, I've stood my ground and I've stood by my voters and I've stood by what I said. And so I think I've proven that. And you know, I'm 100% pro-life. And some people will say they're 100% pro-life, but then start talking about right. exceptions. Right. Well, how can you be 100% and have exceptions? Right. That's like saying I'm 100% pro-life 70% of the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Right. I mean, maybe that's that common core. I don't yeah. know. But I don't, I don't believe in that. I believe in telling people where I stand. Uh, one interesting conversation I had with a, a constituent as I've been campaigning is he brought me into his office and he challenged me on some issues and made it seem like he was on opposite sides. Mm. And he said, there, now you're sorry you came in here, aren't you? And I said, no. I said, I believe what I believe. And not everyone's going to believe that. And that's OK. Yeah. And then as he talked, then he kind of broke out laughing. He says, actually, I support everything that you believe. Oh, how funny. <laughs> and so he was challenging me to was. see if I would stand on it. He was testing you. Yes. Well, listen, you mentioned talking to some constituents. You've been hitting the campaign trail. Yes. I see that you're very busy. What are you hearing from people while you're out there on the road? What do you see as being the top issues for them? Well, it's been a real joy. It's been exciting. It's, it, it wears you out, but it's, it's really cool to get to meet all the new people and to learn a lot of things. And, you know, people were mad about the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. They were mad about having their rights infringed upon. You know, if I own a store and you want to shop at my store, that's between you and me, and that's that's what being American is. Yeah, uh, it's really not big daddy government's place to come and say, well, that's not safe, so you can't do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't think it's safe, you can stay home. Yeah, and so they they were mad about their rights being taken away. They were mad about the the financial impact. And I've talked to several businesses own, owners that barely got through that that said they'll never do it again. Yeah, that if there's another shutdown, they're going to stay open because when they close their doors, they know it's going to be for good. Um, now, one good thing through the shopping season was there is a bright side to some of this. A lot of people have turned more to the local market mm -hmm. and to privately owned uh, boutiques and shops for their shopping instead of going to the big department stores, right. either because they didn't want the crowds or because of with the disruption in supply, mm -hmm. they were just looking in new markets to find what they were wanting. Yeah. And so there's actually been some some kind of turn back to local shopping. It's been kind of exciting to hear about. That is neat. Well, also uh, an important issue that I think, you know, overreach just isn't about, you know, big corporations and institutions. It's happening in our local schools. Yes. And education has really come to the forefront during this pandemic. Where do you stand on uh, school choice? And we're also seeing right now that uh, some schools, especially in, in Little Rock right now, they are pivoting back to virtual. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I think virtual education has been proven to be no education mm -hmm. or virtually no education. Yeah. And uh, it also is stacked against the most vulnerable students that don't have as much access and don't have the help at home that other kids right. don't have. So I think it's doubly bad for our most vulnerable students. Yeah. And I think that it's just, um, it's not worth it. I, I, don't, I don't see the advantage of it. Uh, I've got schools in my area that do the mask and don't do the mask. The unmasked schools have had basically the same rate of mm -hmm. infection as the mask schools. It just, there's not a lot of science behind the science. Right. Is what it yeah. seems to me. Yeah. Well, talk to us about school choice, though. So that is part of the Republican Party platform. What are your thoughts on school choice? I think school choice is like every other market. The more competition you have, the better product you get. And competition drives innovation, and it, it drives improvement, and it gives you the best product. And so I, I'm, I'm pro uh, school choice. What would you want people to know about your campaign and uh, what, would, what it would be like if you were to be elected? 
Well, you know, uh, filling out the surveys for the different packs and stuff, one of the questions is always is, what's the first thing you're going to enact? Mm -hmm. And I kind of hate that question because I just want to protect individual rights and defend against the growth of government. And I think if, if you do that, you, you'll get the right legislation. So how can people get involved with your campaign? I'm sure they're going to be watching this and, okay, well, how can we find Joe? How do we get involved? What's the best way to do that? So you can contact me at electjoepearson.com or um, on Facebook, Joe Pearson for Arkansas. And um, my phone number is 479-567-1831. And it's on all my push cards. And I put that out there. So. That's awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming into the studio today. Thank we you. look forward to watching your campaign.